Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Broder Precision. In this video, we are continuing our series on the basics of Niagara 4, and we're going to be specifically looking at the platform, what the platform does, the different options and views that are available to you within the platform, and um, how you can do specific things in there. So let's jump right into Niagara and uh, get started. All right, so if you remember where we left off in the last video, we had just created our station and had used a couple features within the platform in order to get that station up and running. In this video, we're going to first start by jumping into our platform. If you don't have the platform available here underneath your host, what you're going to do is right click on your host. If you're running, if you want to run stations locally, if you want to run them in a JACE, obviously you would you would punch in an IP address to a JACE uh, in order to get access to it. Um, I'm going to right click on my host, do open platform. I'm going to use the TLS connection. That's the method that we recommend you use uh, no matter where you're connecting to a platform on. Uh, it's secure, uh, which means the data that you're sending back and forth, nobody can jump in there and uh, see what you're saying for your passwords and that kind of thing. So uh, we're going to say TLS, and that's port 5011. The previous non-secure version was uh, 3011. So we're going to do 5011, and then we're going to log in using an administrator account on your PC if you're connecting to your local host. Uh, this can cause some issues for some people if you don't have full administrator access, access to your computer. Um, you can create a local user within Windows and give that administrator access and use that to log in. Um, I'm going to assume, for the sake of this video, that you have administrator access with your Windows user. So you'll use your Windows user's username and then the password for that Windows user. And then we'll hit OK to get in. And then we'll get this list of different um, views and features within the platform. Starting from the top, we have the application director. This is where you're going to live most of the time when you're accessing the platform. So we're going to jump in there. And what we will see is all of the stations that I have available within my platform uh, to run and use. Uh, since this is a local demo uh, licensed computer, you actually can run multiple stations at the same time using different ports and things. This can make your life easier depending on your uh, job that you're working on. If you needed to have uh, multiple JASES or uh, stations talking to each other and accessing them locally in order to engineer, you have that ability to do that here. So at the very top, those are our stations. You can see the station name, uh, what it is. You'll, this will always be station. Uh, what its current status is. In my case, I'm running the demo station that we created in the previous video. And then we'll see the ports that we're using and the services on those um, ports. So in this case, we're not using any of the unsecure uh, services. So no Fox, no HTTP, only the secure ones. That's out of the box defaults for Niagara. So my Fox S is at 4911. Uh, this is 415, so we have the WebSockets version of Fox that's using 443, and HTTPS obviously is also using 443. Um, we have the ability to turn on auto start. You're going to want this if this is a supervisor machine that you're working with or obviously a JACE. Um, that means that anytime uh, Workbench, or excuse me, the platform is started or even like Windows is rebooted, um, the station will automatically start so you don't have to come in here and manually start it yourself. The next column is our reset or restart on failure. If uh, your station crashes for some reason, uh, the station will, or the platform will automatically restart that station uh, after the crash. So depending on what the crash is, you may end up in sort of an infinite reboot loop, uh, but certain crashes may recover after a restart, as is the norm with uh, technology. Restarting tends to fix things. Um, so that is the station portion at the top here. Down below, for the station that you have selected, you can see the debug uh, or the uh, console. Um, it's called a couple different names. This is a really important place to know about because when you have issues, uh, a lot of the time that issue will be written out here to your debug or your standard output uh, so that you can see exactly what's going on in a little bit more detail than uh, 
you may see where the error is actually occurring. So in my case, I started this station up a little while ago, and you can see the whole startup process, uh, the timestamps of when it happened, the particular service that's reporting uh, a status. In this case, most of these things you can see on the far left are just info um, that's being reported out just so that you can see progress is happening in your station startup. But then there's also things that are uh, errors. Uh, you can see I've got a secu uh, severe error because I'm, I'm probably missing a module or something like that for something that's uh, in the station. And then there's a couple warnings here, uh, meaning the thing that's being talked about or, or written to the standard output uh, isn't going to cause any major issues, but it's something that you should know about. Uh, in this case, a good example of it is that I'm using the default uh, TLS certificate in... Uh, the station, which is not a recommended thing to do. Uh, so station, uh, Tritium has told you this is not recommended and you should generate one specifically for the installation and sign it, yada, yada, yada. So that is the standard output portion. On the far right, we have our controls for the station that's selected. So I can turn on and off auto start and restart on failure here. I can stop my station. I can restart it. Uh, if this was a Jace, I could reboot the full com Jace completely. Um, and another one to, to know about is uh, the kill button. Uh, if you have a, an issue where your station is like completely frozen, um, the kill may be the only option to get that station to stop. The uh, stop and restart functions may not work at all. So kill is good to use there. Dump threads is a debug feature that you may or may not uh, need to use when you're working with uh, T-Support at Brody um, when we're working with Tritium if you've got a bigger issue. Then we've got a couple other things that you probably won't touch much. The only other one that I will mention that is helpful is the pause output. If you've got uh, a whole bunch of stuff happening in your station, say it's a, uh, a supervisor and you've got a whole bunch of JSs that are talking to it, this standard output may move quickly. And if you're trying to debug something, uh, that can be very frustrating because uh, it's hard to get uh, exactly the data that you want to see. So you have the ability to pause the output that you're seeing on the screen so that it stops it completely where it is and you can go through and find the specific bits of uh, information that you need. Um, the rest of this, not really super important to know, but uh, it is there. You have the ability to send this out to a file, um, tweak some of the settings in here on buffer size and how much of the standard output you want to save. Um, not really worth touching or knowing about, but it is there. So if we go back to this, we can go back to the full list of platform features here on the far left in our nav tree, or we can hit this drop down in the top right, which gives us uh, the same access that we would have gotten if we double click double clicked on the platform. So the next one that we're going to look at is the certificate management. We've done a whole series of videos on certificates within Niagara. So I won't go over the individual views and things that you can do here. Suffice it to say that if you need to manage your certificates, this is the uh, place that you're going to do it. Um, and if you're connecting to other devices and the connection is happening over um, uh, secure connection. Uh, you may need to use this uh, user trust store or allowed hosts, excuse me, the allowed host tab to approve certificates to make that uh, connection actually completely function. So we have a full series of videos that cover all these topics um, already on the YouTube channel. Uh, tr uh, Niagara cert Certificates and Niagara is the name of the series. Uh, you can go check that out and we'll link it up above here so that you can um, find it. Next uh, area is going to be the lexicon uh, installer. You're only really going to ever touch this if you're working in multiple languages. Most of the time here in North America, United States, you're, you're typically only going to be using English, so you're never even going to go in here. Honestly, I don't think I've ever actually used the, lex the lexicon installer. But it is here if you need to add uh, functionality to work with additional languages other than just English. Next, we have the License Manager. I'm going to do a full video on Niagara licensing here uh, very soon. So we'll sort of gloss over this a little bit other than to say 
Um, if you need to update your license, you'll go into the license manager and hit import, and then it'll take a second or two, and you have the ability to, at the very bottom here, uh, grab the latest license from the licensing server directly. Um, you just select that radio button, hit OK, and it'll pull down the latest license from the licensing server so that if, uh, as happens with demo stations um, or demo licenses, at the end of the year, um, as you can see, the 31st of March, after the 31st of March, you need a new license because it expires every year. This is where you would go in and import that uh, if it doesn't do it automatically. So we'll cancel out of that. And then uh, I'm actually going to come back over here and we'll look at things this way. Uh, I'll go to the platform administration. This is another place that you'll tend to uh, go in and do things, especially on a JACE. Um, we have the ability to see a whole bunch of details about our platform, uh, what ports we're on, what version we're running, uh, time, uh, all of that sort of very basic uh configuration and status information is all going to be underneath your platform administration. Uh, this is something you're probably going to touch more often in a JACE to make sure that uh, your time is set properly and all of that kind of thing. Uh, top left, we've got a button here for a little bit more detailed information. You can see it's going to pull up some uh, module information and that kind of thing as well. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We'll wait for that to finish. All right, so we've got that details window up now, and you can see I've got way more detailed information in text here, uh, just about all the information you could possibly need. Uh, very easy to copy and paste out. Uh, you can see a lot of this information overlaps with what we get on the basic platform administration screen, but there's a whole bunch of extra information here as well, like module versions, and uh, if we scroll down even further, what applications we have, so what stations, um, if we're using any lexicons, license that we have, and their certificates. So uh, that's good to know about because if you need to copy it out, this would be the place to do it. So we'll hit cancel or close here, and then uh, update authentication. In this case, uh, you're not really gonna need to use this or want to use this, on a demo station or a demo platform that's running on your computer, but you will uh, need to know about it if you are using a JACE. System passphrase, if you wanted to change the passphrase that your machine has, you can do that here. Obviously, you need to know what your current passphrase is um, in order to change it to a new one. If you wanted to change your port that you're using for uh, your platform connection, uh, you would do that here. And uh, the certificate you could change as well. And the different uh, TLS specific settings would all be in here. And then we can change how we're outputting things to the application director uh, here. Uh, different filter levels, uh, which determines what um, level of data gets put out to the application director or the log. And then if we're wanting, wanting to do any system log, uh, so outputting our logging to a different server, that's all done here. And then we have another way that we can get to our standard output uh, from this uh, platform, platform administration window as well. And then we can do a backup from here too. Um, the state it would connect to the station and do the backup that way typically your backups are going to happen at the station level not the platform level so this is typically not used um, if this was a jace we'd have access to our commissioning wizard which is how you set up and uh, run a jace we'll do that in a future video as well and that basically covers everything that you're going to see in platform administration next we'll go to station copier uh, because of the way that the uh, architecture works in Niagara, we need to copy uh, stations from our um, user home into the platform home. Um, we have a video um, covering all of that already in the series, so go back and check that out if you haven't already. Um, suffice it to say, this is where you do that copy from uh, what you can actually run in your application director, which is going to be the right side of the screen here, and then the left side is just your user home, a uh, place where you could keep backups of stations and uh, other stations that maybe you would want to run in the future or you got from somebody else. 
and then we have our TCP IP configuration on a Windows machine that's running Niagara you're never going to touch anything in here aside from maybe seeing what your status is of things um, anytime you want to do any IP configuration on a Windows machine that's running Niagara you're going to go into Windows your control panel network connections and do all of the IP management and set up directly in Windows and then we have the ability to look at the file system. Again, this isn't really that useful in um, a demo station or a supervisor that's running on Windows. If you wanted to work with the file system, you'll just use Windows Explorer in order to do that. But you can get a glimpse into your system home and user home here um, directly within Niagara. So that basically covers everything that you're going to see in the platform within a uh, demo station or a demo setup on a Windows computer. Uh, it would be the same on a supervisor that's running Windows as well. So hopefully that was helpful and informative for you. Uh, just another step in the process of learning Niagara a little bit better. And uh, hopefully if you um, are already a seasoned Niagara 4 user, maybe there's some other tidbits you could you gain from uh, watching that. So thanks as always for watching. If you have any questions or comments or things that you'd like to see covered a little bit more in the series, you can leave them in the comments down below. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're looking for a place to get your uh, Niagara related uh, software or hardware, whether it's Jace's, um, that kind of thing, be sure to check us out, brodyprecision.com or store.brodyprecision.com. Uh, thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.